Hey guys, Magnum 68 here. Today we're looking at this old 1873 Springfield trapdoor rifle I just picked up. Um, I got a, a lot of interest in these old guns, especially the military guns. Uh, I just wanted to show it to you guys. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to take it apart, disassemble it, clean it up. Uh, I'm not going to destroy the value or anything like that. I'm not going to do any sanding on it. Uh, but I do want to clean it, um, you know, clean clean a lot of this uh, oil and stuff that's been soaked into the stock over the years. Get that off of there and uh, clean the metal up uh, as best I can without removing any any of the uh, finish on it. Um, and, uh, of course, clean out the barrel. The barrel, uh, took a quick peek at it. Doesn't look too bad. I want to see how well it cleans up. Um I'd like to be able to shoot this thing so uh if everything looks okay I'm, i might i do some reloading so i might start reloading some 45 70 for it uh, if i can find reloading supplies uh, but let me get some tools together and i'll get right back here and we'll get started okay guys first thing i want to do is remove the cleaning rod now this is the first one of these trap doors i've owned so uh, I had to kind of figure this out, but uh, you don't just pull on this. This has, you can see this little groove right here. Well, that's the catch. So you have to kind of pull that out away from the barrel. And it can be pretty stiff. And then pull up on it. There we go. And then it should pull out. I was tempted to, I thought maybe it was stuck down here, you know, at the bottom somehow, uh, from just being left in there for many years. But I was, I was tempted to stick a screwdriver or something through this slot and try to tap it out. And I thought, eh, maybe that's not such a good idea. And then I got to look in and, and thinking about it and, Sure enough, that was the catch right there. You can see the little bar in there that it catches on. So you wanna pull that out and then up. And if it's been in there a while, it takes, takes a little bit of force. So next thing we wanna do is remove these barrel bands. Now you can see this, you gotta push in this little retainer right here and then work that band up past it. It's kind of hard to do on camera. <clears throat> Boy, this is a tough one. Might take a, a soft mallet and give it a little, little tap to get it started. Okay, it's over that part now, so just kind of wiggle it and get that off. Now we've got the rear one here. This does the same way. Just push in on that. Okay, this one's going to be tough, so what we can do here, hopefully I'm on camera, Push that, if we can get it to move enough to, I think we did, we caught that and held it down. We'll just take a wood block. You don't want to use anything hard, you know. You don't want to scar that up so the wood will protect it. There. That worked, worked free pretty easy. And we got that off of there. Okay, now the next thing, we want to loosen these two screws right here, and you want to do it evenly, just loosen each one of them just a little bit, and then what we'll do is we'll tap on those, and that should push this plate off the other side here, so. Make 
make sure you have the proper screwdriver that fits it. You don't want to booger those screws up. These look pretty nice. Nobody's damaged these in the past. So. Oh yeah, they're coming loose pretty easy. Just a few turns there. A few turns on this one. Give them a little tap. I want to bang on it real hard. And I can see that's already starting to come loose there. So. Work them out some more. Give them another tap. Okay, they're not even they're just turning now, so that must be free. It's coming out there, if you can see that, a little more than the rear, so let's give this another tap. And the next thing we want to do is take this take this tang screw loose here and then hopefully the barrel just comes right off. So what I'm going to do now, I'll do it off camera. Uh, I'll, I'll probably take all this part too, but I want to clean this up, this barrel up inside and out. Um, and uh, then I'm going to take some lacquer thinner uh, on a rag and just wipe this stock down real good. I don't want to do any kind of sanding or anything like that on it. I just, I just want to get the crud off of it. And... Uh, make sure it's nice and clean the stocks in really nice shape um, so I think it'll look a lot better once I get it cleaned up but once I do that I haven't decided if I'm gonna pull this out yet um, I probably will but you got to be real careful there because it could splinter this wood on its way out so um, 
but I'll get back to you here after I get some of this cleaned up and show you where we're at and then we'll put it back together. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I'm doing here with the small parts uh, that I took off the gun. Uh, I've got this sonic cleaner here and I just put them in there and run that for a couple of cycles, uh, help loosen things up and then I, I uh, switch them over here and put them in this pot with some uh, distilled water and boil it for a little bit um, and uh, and then I'll cart them off with a carting wheel. Uh, I don't know if I'll get any video there or not, I'll try to. Um, and then I'll be back and I'll show you a little bit of the process of uh, cleaning up this stock here with some lacquer thinner. I won't get into all of it. I don't want the video to go too long, but I'll show you a little bit of that. Okay, what I'm gonna do here, I got some lacquer thinner. I'm just gonna put a little bit on this maple towel here. Just start wiping this. Now this isn't going to hurt the wood. Um, it's just going to take off any any oil and grease and stuff that's that's on the outside of it and uh, bring back some of the natural beauty. As you can see there, what it's doing. Uh, and then when I'm done with that, I'll I'll probably coat it in some uh, boiled linseed oil or something like that, uh, just to protect it. Then again. And uh, no sanding or anything like that on it. You know, you don't want to ruin the uh, the value of it. You don't want to take away any of the scars and marks that it's accumulated over the years. Uh, that's just part of the history of it. And, I mean, to some people, maybe that doesn't mean nothing, but to me it does. So. But uh, I'll work on this some more. You can see it's a little dark here at the bottom. I think that's probably from where it was, uh, you know, sitting on the ground a lot of times or, you know, stacked up, uh, standing upright. And it probably got more moisture in the bottom of the, uh, the buttstock there. Kind of turned that. I don't know if we can make that look any better. Or, I don't know. It may, it may make it more pronounced for all I know, but... Either way, I want it clean, and uh, this is going to be a shooter. I'm going to shoot this thing. This isn't going to just go in the safe and for something to talk about. So I'll work over the rest of the stock, and uh, then I'll get back to you and show you where you were at. Okay, guys. As you can see, I got the stock all cleaned down with lacquer thinner. Uh, looks a lot better. Uh, hopefully, you can see that. Um, just took off all that old crud that's built up over the years. And uh, it's, it just, I mean, it just feels clean now and it's nice and smooth. Like I say, you don't want to do any kind of sanding on it or anything like that. Um, but now I'm just going to put a, a coat of linseed oil on it just to protect it. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of that and then I'll, I'll cut and come back and show you when it's finished up. But, what I'll do is I'll put it on here, well, kind of thick, I guess, and you can just see what that's doing for it. It just brings the beauty out in that walnut. And uh, so I'll, I'll get a pretty good coat on there, and then I'll let it sit about five or ten minutes and let it soak in good. And then what you want to do, you want to come back wipe it all back off as much as you can get back off of it wipe it off real good and then let it set overnight uh, then you can do the whole process again and you can let it set again you can do it the next day you know it just depends on how much you want to put on there i'm not interested in uh, doing too much with it i just i just want to you know protect the wood and uh, bring some of that beauty back so but uh, i'll when i get this finished then i'll I'll bring back and, and show you the final product. Okay. Okay, we're here at the carting wheel. Um, what this is, if you're not familiar with it, um, it's a real fine um, 
steel, I guess, uh, wheel. It's kind of like four aught steel wool. It's, it's no harsher than that. So it won't take the finish off, uh, but it will clean up, uh, the, you know, the rust and corrosion. So, uh, I mean, as you can see, I can touch that with my hand. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. So, uh, what I like to do then after I boiled it, because the boiling process converts that rust and, uh, and then it basically you clean it up with the carding wheel. As you can see, there's one of the barrel bands. You can see what it looks like after it's been boiled. And uh, what I'll do, I'll go over this with the carding wheel and then I'll probably have to do the inside of it with some steel wool. So four out steel wool, don't use anything harsher than that. Um, and then if I'm not happy with it, I boil it again, go through the process again. <coughs> Excuse me. If, uh, if we're happy with the results, then probably a good idea to uh, soak it in some kerosene, you know, probably overnight. Um, and what that does, it, it separates any moisture, you know, that might still be there from the boiling process. Gets that out because if, if there's any moisture, it's just going to turn to rust again. So you don't want that to happen. So uh, so getting some kerosene, then uh, after that process, then, you know, you can wipe it down with a gun oil and, uh, to preserve it. But I'll show you what this will do to this barrel band, and then I'll do the rest of them. And... Uh, uh, We'll get back to you then in a bit. You can see there. That's the side I did. That's the side I haven't done yet. So, really does a nice job, and it doesn't take the bullying off. That's the main That's probably going to be good enough for that. So I, I probably won't boil this again. Um, but one thing I know I'll have to boil <laughs> maybe two or three more times is that butt plate. You can see how bad it was rusted. So let's see what this does for it. Pretty good. Uh, if you guys have uh, any methods of doing, you know, doing this type of restoration with, without, you know, damaging the originality of it, uh, let me know, you know, in the comments. I'd like to hear because, you know, I'm always willing to learn something new. I, I'm just showing you what I do. So, let's see what it does on that backside. That was pretty bad, that backside of it.
know, it's just amazing how well that'll clean up after boiling it. If I hadn't boiled that, I could sit here all day with this thing. It, it, would, it wouldn't even come close to that. If you've ever worked with steel wool, four out steel wool, you know how fine it is. And uh, it just, you know, it, it, it wouldn't do that. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. And I'll, I'll probably throw this back in the pot and boil this piece again at least. Uh, I don't know that it'll come out any better, but it doesn't hurt to try. You can see the, the U.S. there on the end of it. It'd be nice if that was a little bit, you know, clearer. I don't know if I can get any of that out. There's some pitting there, so I kind of doubt it. But, um, we'll see what we can do, and I'll be back with you. Well, I decided to go ahead and completely disassemble uh, everything on uh, on the gun. Um, that way I could get it cleaned up better. I went ahead and pulled uh, the uh, trigger assembly and that out, and you can see it cleaned up really nice. Um, everything cleaned up real nice. It didn't destroy any of the bluing or anything. Uh, it just, uh, it, it just, it, I'm just thrilled with how it all turned out. And I pulled the uh, breech block out so I could remove the firing pin and clean that up. Um, you you know, I figured there might be some gunk down in there and I didn't want that, what can happen to that firing pin. If it, if it gets froze up in there and hangs up, then, you know, when you, when you close it up, it could actually fire, fire around just by closing the, the trap door. <laughs> and you don't, you don't want that to happen. So, I uh, cleaned that all up and uh, and got everything working free. And then uh, I soaked in kerosene overnight, like I said, uh, and then wiped it all down and uh, just put a coat of mineral oil on everything. So I got that all ready. Um, pretty happy with it. Uh, it's ready to go back together, but I'm, I'm waiting on the gun stock. I decided to put a second coat of boiled linseed oil on that uh, today so i did that i let it set overnight from the coat yesterday and then i coated again today uh, so tomorrow um, i should be able to go ahead and put everything back together so i'll be back in just a just a bit here and we'll we'll get it reassembled well guys for the sake of time i just went ahead and reassembled it off camera and uh, bring back and show you the finished product here. I, with my current camera set up, I can't get good enough angles and everything when I'm assembling. Uh, and, and I didn't want to waste you guys' time. But there are some good videos on YouTube um, about disassembling and assembling these old trapdoor rifles. So you might want to look those up. Uh, but it's all finished up. I I thought I was going to have to wait till tomorrow, but uh, I checked in the the stock was uh, pretty well dry, so I went ahead and put it back together. Um, I, I'm just thrilled with it. I, I don't know if I got you good enough uh, pictures of it uh, beforehand. I'll try to attach some before and after to this if, if I can figure out how. Uh, but it, I mean, it's just a different. It's just a different firearm. It's just. I just. I just think it turned out wonderful. It didn't didn't ruin any of the bluing. Didn't damage the wood in any way. Just it just looks like it's a well-maintained rifle for a long time. Uh, I'll try to get you a little close-up here of it. It just now you know you you could go further and completely restore it, make it look like a new gun, but then that would that would just destroy its value. Uh, so I'm, I am really pleased with it. If you've got one of these, you know, uh, tell me about it in the comments. Tell me your experiences with it. Um, what you think of them. If you reload for them, I, <clears throat> I'd like to hear some information on that because I'm considered doing that. Cause I, I mean, it, if you can even find ammo for these old trap doors, um, Right now, it, it is expensive. I mean, it's like three dollars a round or something. Uh, it, it's crazy, but uh, so I am going to try. I did order some stuff, uh, but I am going to try to 
do some reloading for it. I'd like to, if I could find some black powder, I'd like to make some black powder loads for it too. So um, chime in, let me know your thoughts on that. Um, if you like the video, uh, you know, hit that like button and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Uh, um, I, you know, I've done some videos. It's been quite a while. I allow you guys subscribe and, and I really appreciate that. I've been wanting to get back to it and and it's been a while, but uh, I'm, I'm back now and I'm hoping to, to crank out a few more. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Take care.